Okay, saying we're being live streamed. I know there should be some people. Let's see. At the same time as saying we're live, it's also saying it's setting us up. So I think we are. Um, but we'll check in and see. Lovelies, if you can see and hear us, uh, let us know. Let me see. I'm going to put us into gallery view. I don't know if that makes the difference. Let me just refresh the Facebook page and see. Let's see if I can see us. Yeah, I think we're there. I think we're there. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Um, yes, just give us a give us a shout. Um, yes, and there we are, both of us. And we've got some viewers already, which is exciting. So just drop um, a little note in the comments to let us know that you can hear us okay and that everything is working. Yes, Laurie says we are live. Amazing. Okay, so lovelies. Um, many of you may already know Lauren because I talk about her all the time. I'm always raving about her. Um, she's the genius uh, copywriter behind my own uh, sales page, not the rest of my site. So don't blame her for that. <laughs> but my, my coaching page, which I love, um, was written by Lauren. Um, she's the she's the number one copywriter I would recommend to anybody in particular uh, my my people service-based business owners who want to do uh, copywriting in a more ethical way so hey Lauren thank you for being here oh thank you so much and that was a beautiful introduction I appreciate it <laughs> my pleasure my pleasure so I'm assuming you've got tea do you have tea? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, for, for those that don't know, Lauren and I are both big tea drinkers. I, I think you're a bit more of a connoisseur. I just stick to my chat. <laughs> oh, chat is good. <laughs> um, so, lovelies, what I wanted to just give some context to you. So, um, what we're going to talk about today um, is basically, you know, Lauren's an expert in ethical copywriting. Um, and, you know, we are both on the same page when it comes to not writing copy that manipulates that you know creates anxiety all of the stuff that we were so used to seeing online so you're going to talk to us a little bit today about that um, I also just wanted to let people know um, that Lauren is in the in the midst of enrolling for her uh, Truer Words Mastermind which is an incredible offering um, but we're not going to do any sales stuff today um, because this is about just you know, showing up and being of service and, and supporting the people in, in the collective uh, with some top tips to write copy without sounding salesy. But I will be dropping that into, um, into, the, into the comments. So if anybody wants to just take a look or is interested, Lauren is actually offering us a significant discount to, to members of my audience particularly. So we will say a little bit about that at the end, just how to, you know, make use of that discount if you want to. But other than that, this is going to be, we're, we're thinking around 30 minutes of pure Lauren Gold, basically. <laughs> <laughs> not, to put, not to put any pressure on you whatsoever, but there you go. Um, so, Lauren, I'm going to hand over to you and I will, you know, if, if there's questions I have or things, and I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. So if people have questions, you know, please put them in the comments and I'll, I'll make sure Lauren gets them. All right. Thank you. Okay. So to give you a little bit of background on where I came from as a copywriter, I spent the better part of 10 years working in software as a service doing thought leadership content, which is basically, here's how software as a service marketing should work, and here's how it does anyways. But even in that, even in that trying to guide people into better ways to market their apps, um, basically is what I was doing, um, there was... I mean, you just get inundated with the typical super salesy tactics that we all know and loathe. And I know that because I'm speaking to Caroline's audience, like you, you're totally on the same page. You know what it's like to go on a website and just feel creeped out. So these tactics, they work on a lot of people. They do not tend to work on us. So it's a slightly different psychographic where um, that's a fancy word for a group of people who think a certain way. Um, <laughs> that's a bad definition. Don't hold me to that. But we can sniff out something that is intended to manipulate us, something that's intended to um, freak us out. Most of the time, we're pretty good at it. You know, if it sounds like a used car salesman, our ears have been trained to pick that up. So 
how do we do this thing, this marketing thing without triggering that, oh, you sound like a used car salesman. You sound like a drug co- company commercial if you're in the US. Some companies don't have that issue. We do. <laughs> but it's that really sort of salesy stuff. So there are a few things that, you know, because I'm sort of preaching to Caroline's choir, you know, these are probably things that you know, but I'm just going to go over them really quickly because it really sets up what the regular way of copywriting and marketing is versus this ethical copywriting that we're, we're really just trying to bring into being. Right now is a wonderful time because we're trying to, to birth this new way of doing things. And there are a few of us out there and we are trying to raise our voices as loud as we can that there is another way. So um, normal copywriting is trying to pull out tricks to create anxiety, to create fear of missing out is a big one. Um, And that's, you know, it's things on the page like the countdown timer is an obvious one. A less obvious one is a pop-up that gives you an offer. And if you say no, it's like, oh, you don't really care about your business. So that's something copywriters learn to do is to shame you into doing the thing that they want you to do. And that's really what sets up regular copywriting from ethical copywriting. Regular copywriting is really words on the page that try to create an action. Like they are trying to control the person on the other side and make them do something that you want them to do, usually by. So The ethical copywriting is not trying to sell so much as trying to create a connection. And this is so much more sustainable because when you have a real connection, like a real connection with your audience and you give them every good reason to know, like, and trust you, they're gonna hang with you forever. They're gonna refer their friends because you've built this foundation based on something real and and based on something that is wholly positive. So I would argue that ethical copywriting works better in the long term. Sure, the other way will get you short-term sales, but it's not going to be great for your business as you move forward. So there are a few things you can do. First is actively seek out those things that give you the creeps in pages that you find in ads that you read and do the opposite. That's actually what I do. I, (laughs) if something hits me as, oh gosh, no, um, I make a note of it. And I think, how can I play with that? Because people are expecting that way of selling. What if I do the total opposite? So one of those things is, um, this kind of leads into the next point of slowing down the sale instead of speeding it up. So there are places on your page um, where you can actually, one of my clients does this. I don't know if I can share screen with a live, but I'll tell you what's on there. She has this services page and she outlines her point of view. This is how I do things. This is why, and it sounds super amazing. And you're like totally in. And she's like, wait a minute. This is her copy. Wait a minute. I know this sounds amazing. I know you're totally in, but My best clients tend to have these things in common. Maybe you do too. And then she outlines these these types of fit. You know, um, my my best clients tend to be rebels at heart. And she just outlines their characteristics. And then if people see themselves in that list, by the time they hit whatever button is down there, she's going to know that they are actually really good, good fits for her. And she's a good fit for them. And it just sets you up for success. It sets them up for success. And that's what we can do when we slow things down instead of trying to trigger that that primal part of the brain with fear of missing out with countdown timers with, oh my gosh, I better do this now. Um, You'll get a lot of, of wrong fit clients, which is the kind of client that will drive you absolutely crazy and make you question your life choices you don't want to speed up the sale. It doesn't work for anybody. (laughs) It might give you some short-term cash, but you might have to refund half of it. It's not a good plan. 
So the the third thing, and this is something that I I struggle to I struggle to talk some of my clients into is actually being really transparent. Uh, and, and that can be as simple as posting your prices on your sales page, posting your prices on your services page if you want to get wild. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just being really honest, like here's the process, here's what we do, this is what you get, and setting up reasonable expectations that you actually meet. Sounds really simple. It can be a little scary for some people who have been really trained the other way, you know, hide the price, make them get on a call first, um, talk them into it, make the sale, you know, when they can't escape. <laughs> Rude. So um, there's a lot of like, here's how to not do the other kind of copy. I want to give you some ideas that are sort of like, here's what you can do. So when we are dealing with ethical copy, we're looking at making connections. What's the first most important thing on your site to make a personal connection? Some of you are going to hate this. I'm sorry. Put a photo of you on your homepage. <laughs> that's, that's it. Just put a picture of you on like in your header section, make it a big picture. And I'm so sorry because I know some of you are cringing at that. Um, it's so important because that is your first impression most likely that might be the first time people are meeting you and you wouldn't open your front door if you were expecting company and have a bag over your head that would be weird so you want to you know show your face and and welcome them to your your website and really it's welcoming them to the experience that you're creating for them on your website it's like welcoming them into your home so the other thing we can do is just be clear be so super clear. Don't try to be sneaky. Don't try to be <laughs> actually most people that come to me, they're not trying to be sneaky, but they are trying to be very um, artistic and poetic. And they have this beautiful title for the service that they offer. And it does not say what the service is or does. It sets up no expectation. It's very confusing. Um, I don't say chuck that beautiful piece of poetry. You know, so a lot of copywriters would, and, and I'm sympathetic. I'm an English major. I love words. I love poetry. Um, but what I do say is if you're going to have a beautiful title for, for your service, for your business, have a very structurally sound tagline. And what I mean by that is so clear, like what you do, who you do it for, what it helps them do. So you can have that beautiful title and then make it super clear, super plain language, super boring, because that's like the, the big burly guy at the circus who holds up the beautiful dancer. Uh, that, that dancer is, is being beautiful up there doing all of these you know, fancy things because she's being held by something that's really strong. <laughs> so make that, make that clarity part of your welcome. So once we get into the pages, especially sales pages, there are a lot of formulas that I see repeated over and over. It happened twice yesterday. I was working on two separate clients' drafts and darned if they didn't both have these set up. And it, I think it, it's so common because it comes from a lot of other templates that you'll find for copywriting. And it's this, you'll, you'll recognize it immediately. It's on so many commercials. Do you feel tired? Are you struggling to get out of bed in the morning? It's that starting with a bunch of questions. So the idea behind starting with questions is to get them to relate to the pain point that you're trying to bring up, right? But because the question trope has been overused, it strikes our ears as super salesy right away. Like it's not inherently bad, it's not inherently wrong. It just has been used by so many marketers that it's gotten a bit dirty. <laughs> you know, it's gotten a bit, a bit used, a bit frayed around the edges. Um, and such a, a simple change, you wanna create that empathy. You wanna tell them, I understand where you are, 
they're not going to trust you if you're, if you're like, <laughs> if you're not meeting them where they are and where they are is I have a problem. I'm looking for a solution. So you're like, okay, yeah, I, I hear, I hear that. Um, you are feeling tired. I know it's hard to get up out of bed. You turn them into statements and that's really powerful. It's a tiny thing. It's really powerful. So empathy is important, but where it starts sliding into ick is if you really, like you take this pain point that you know they're suffering and you make them feel worse about it. This is a copywriting technique. There are even formulas for how to generate this. Problem, agitate, solution is one of them, pass. Uh, so you present the problem that you know they have. You agitate it to make them feel worse. And then you present your solution. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you can just empathize with them, meet them where they are, and explain, you know, here are the things you've probably tried. I know because I tried them too, because most of us have, that's part of our journeys for how we got to be the teachers that we are. And then you're like, I, you know, I found this different way. I think it might work better for you. Much different energy there. So, I mean, I could go on and on and it probably will, but <laughs> I want to also open this up to questions, things that you've seen that have felt icky, um, maybe headers, header copy that um, you're not sure about. So really ask me anything, um, but I'll keep keep chatting. Um, with I, I, ways that, yeah, I'm sorry. I have I have a, a question, but I'm I'm just curious. Um, what you think of it because it's something that I've used on a couple of my sales pages and I I actually quite like it and I, I don't know where I got it from but I, I I wondered in terms of that piece around you know doing something differently to uh the pain points and I, I think I've heard you talk before about punching the bruise which is just another way to say agitate which is awful um um and it's I like to talk about my vision for you like in some of my sales pages so I really like to tap into what um I guess if we were to use Tad Hargrave's analogy of island A and island B you know it's the island B it's like uh not the promises not the big inflated you know you'll have six figures in six weeks and all of that stuff but but just here's my vision for you so I even do it for my newsletter uh opt-in page I talk about you know I I imagine you sat drinking your favorite bed, beverage on a Monday morning, reading my letter and, um, and, you know, feeling some relief at reading about strategies that offer a different way, you know, a better alternative to like the ick and manipulation. And, and so I just was curious what your thoughts were on that, because on that, on that, how you present, I mean, it's, it's the benefits also, isn't it? But yeah, I just, if you could speak to that a little bit more about how we avoid, because we have to talk about the struggle that's for real because if people don't relate to, if you've got to be able to speak to the problem that the person is dealing because all businesses should be solving a problem and so yeah I, I like to, I always think you can either shame or fear people into buying the product or you can inspire them <laughs> you know you can lift them up and give them this sense of you know feeling um like there's hope <laughs> yes um, I, and so, either yeah. way you have to meet them where they are yeah it, it's kind of like if you're sitting down with a friend over coffee, you know, they're, you're meeting them at the coffee place and they come in with this energy of it's a great day. Isn't it beautiful? So good to see you. You're going to meet them with that energy. But if they come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I just had the worst morning. I almost got into an accident on the way. And, you know, my dog was barfing in the back and I, can I just go clean that? You are going to meet them with such a different energy. So that's what we, we do on that page. But to speak to that vision part, that is a beautiful way to flip this, this other thing that I see. Um, so one of the, the icky salesy things is the starting with a question. Usually that question, that set of question statements, uh, that is followed by the second most annoying phrase in marketing imagine if <laughs> right yeah, so yeah. your your version is 
is like the light side to this dark side. So the dark side of imagine if is really trying to speak to those benefits. It's trying to speak to, here's the things that I want to move you towards, but you are asking them to do the brain work of imagining, imagine if in a year from now, you could walk into a room super confident and ask for that promotion and get it. You know, I work with a lot of coaches who are specializing in leadership. uh, And that's typically what they're trying to do. And they're trying to paint this picture. Imagine if is overused my vision for you is not. Mm -hmm. And that's actually filling in and and not asking them to do the work, which I like. It's it's sort of like, let me show you the window into my mind of what I can see Mm -hmm. for you that that's possible. And that's a much different energy. Mm -hmm. So no, I really, I love that. Oh, good. (laughs) Because you want to speak to the benefits. You want to speak to those ideal outcomes. You just don't want to do it the way that marketers have been doing it for the last 30 years. Yeah. And also not promising, you know, a big thing that I, you know, work hard. Well, it's not hard to do because I've been doing it for years now, but just not making promises. But again, we're taught to promise. I mean, I remember working with a client who was like, I don't know. (laughs) She was so shocked by my, permission slip to not use promises that it was so alien to her she was like but the coach I had before said I had to promise things so it's like you know you really don't have to promise anything I, I you know I promise you um now but before we go on there are questions in the chat so I want to um I want to read these out. So Petra says, can you say something about length of page? There is such a trend to make it really lengthy and have people scroll and scroll. Personally, I hate it. I like what you did with a short summary at the top. Anything else on length that you would advocate? Yes. Length is a really interesting thing, uh, especially for sales pages. And those are probably the really, you know, the long form sales pages where you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Um, There has also been a trend towards doing that on other pages especially the homepage or maybe a one-page website. And those are sort of different animals. So I'll speak to the sales page because there is actually a logic to that. Now, whether you buy into the logic or not, that's, that is a wonderful thing to question and we should. But here's how it's supposed to work. So you have the length of your page on a sales page is in direct proportion to the level of risk you're asking people to take on. So um, what am I talking about with risk? It's how expensive the program is. And, and that is very, um, it depends on your audience. You know, expensive for one audience might be like no problem for another audience. But if it's a big ask of their financial investment, if it's a big ask of their time investment, if you are really asking them to commit some resources then your page is gonna be longer because you have a bit more hesitation, a lot more hesitation that you need to support. Uh, The dirty way of saying that, the dirty way of looking at this is, um, I don't know why we use dirty for that. I love dirt, I'm a gardener, but anyways, (laughs) that's a sideline. The other way of looking at that is, Here's how we're gonna overcome all of these objections. No, we're not doing that. We're actually making sure on this page that it's a good fit for them, that they feel confident and supported in making a decision with their you know, rational brain, not, not their fear-based primal brain. Um, so that's what we're doing with a longer sales page. It mimics the conversation that you might have with somebody If you were to sit down across from them and you were talking about, you know, what's going on in your business. Oh, you've got that problem. Oh, you know, I I figured out this thing that might be really helpful to you. And then it mimics the conversation of them asking questions and you answering those questions. Ideally, that's how a sales page works. Now, the way it's used where it is endless endless scrolling it feels like they are trying to beat you into agreeing (laughs) they just keep throwing things at you and it's repetitive and it doesn't need to be I think it to to coin a phrase from my high school English teacher about how long should an essay be as long as it needs to be to make your point (laughs) 
none of us liked that answer. It was so vague, but it's also very true. So uh, depending on the level of commitment you're asking, the, the amount of resources that you're asking them to give you, that's, that's kind of how we determine how long it needs to be. I love having a um, sort of summary. <laughs> it's almost... It's almost like the executive summary on a resume. Nobody does this on sales pages because they want you to wade through all of these arguments, all of these testimonials, all of this proof that they have the thing that works. And I'm like, you know, give people a chance to see if the dates work for them, to see if the length of calls work for them, to see if the price works in their budget. Like, just let them sort of figure that out. And then if it does, tell them the rest because that's really what I'm looking for yeah I, lo I love that answer I have something to add also on the, on this because I I too really hate long sales pages um and as a result I just don't do them <laughs> in, in, on my own you know website and so what I do when it's that higher price point, and this won't won't work if you're you know if you're a huge business that is dealing with a lot of people and it's you know just time-wise it would be difficult but I put in that extra security with a call which I know you do as well you'll invite people into a tea date so um so that there's that opportunity to like lean in maybe get to know me maybe to talk to me you know maybe even have a, a comp session with me to to really know okay do I trust this person? Have I got questions? And so that's another way. Or, or also, um, I like to use forms, you know, get people to apply so that they can, again, it just opens that communication. So it's not just all on the sales page. It's like moving them towards, um, always for me, always moving people towards a conversation. If it's a higher, if it's a higher price product, you know, you wouldn't do that for a $50 ebook, but for, for a program, yeah, it makes sense. People, and I think people really appreciate that because it's, it's not that common for the bigger, higher price premium or high ticket, which I hate that phrase, um, uh, you know, programs for you to be able to have, you can have a 20 minute discovery call, sure, but actually have an hour conversation or even a complimentary session or a tea date, you know, where it's, it's not a sales pitch. It's a genuine, let's, let's have a chat and, you know, and see what's up <laughs> for you. Um, that's my, that's that's how I get over having to do a massive long sales page, <laughs> um, even for the high price stuff. Yeah, I love that. I love I love having conversations with people. I mean, that's the best part of my job. <laughs> it's just it is the calls, but that's that's also you know very much our personalities. We like to connect in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to rate. Hopefully, Petra, that helps and answers the question. Um, and I think this, I think the the summary at the top is really, really does answer that kind of dilemma because, you know, again, you're not making people scroll, which is what normally happens. The price is right at the bottom. So they make you go through all of that, you know. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for Petra. Rachel asks, where does philosophy fit within web copy? Should it sit within the about page elsewhere or throughout? Depends on what you mean by philosophy. So do you think she's talking about point of view? Yeah, I do. Okay. But Rach, if you, if you can clarify, but I do think she's talking about point of view there. Um, but I guess philosophy and point of view are one and the same, are they not? Uh, usually, yes. Yeah. So I, I would, the, the way I talk about it is the why you do what you do in the way that you do it. Yeah, thank um, you. So yeah, that's, that is so important. And I would argue that that can go on every single page because it is that important. And what I love about it is it's your built-in differentiator because your philosophy, your point of view, it comes from your entire wealth of life experiences. It comes from your own journey. It comes from what you've tried, what didn't work, and the sense that you made out of that to create something that's new and works better, or to learn this new system, this new modality that for you finally solves those issues you were trying to solve a million other ways. So that mimics your client's journey because they're also searching 
for the thing that you've actually found. So yeah, your point of view, your philosophy, everywhere. (laughs) I mean, and even just to speak to this, because I think it's something that people worry about is being repetitive, you know? So if you're like saying similar things on the homepage, the sales page, the about page, which is actually how it ends up being because you know could you speak to that like what (laughs) what do you say to people who worry about being repetitive with their with their point of view yes okay so um hard hard truth you are the only one besides your mother who's going to read every page of your website (laughs) (laughs) so if it is important you want it on every page. You don't, you don't copy paste. It's not like word for word, but your philosophy informs everything that you do. You know, who you are is consistent. What you believe is consistent. So you want to present those in slightly different ways across the pages. And it's, it's the same for your central message. Like there are key pieces that you just want to make sure people see. So you put them a few different ways in a few different places. And it does, to you, it feels repetitive. To the other person who clicks on two pages of your website, it just feels consistent. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, So Rach, let us know if that answers the question or if you want more detail. And, you know, there's a part of my mind that's going, you know, how do you weave it in? You know, if, for example, with a sales page or or your about page, you have specific things you're supposed to be talking about. Um, and so I don't know if you, I don't know if you have any tips on that. I mean, I kind I kind of know it if I was to sit down and write. You know, for me, point of view is around ethical business and doing business consciously. And um, but you you know, I just wonder if you, yeah, if you have anything to say about how to weave that through the, the copy. I. I like to take it section by section and I've actually diagrammed so many sales pages and you'll find that when you start seeing what each section does, what it talks about, what it's doing uh, functionally, you realize that every sales page has the same pieces. I, I am never surprised when I break down a sales page into its parts that you know it's the same pieces it's rearranged in different ways so there's actually one section that you can move around you can move it up you can make it the first thing they see you can make it the middle i wouldn't put it at the end it's too important but there's a whole section of here's here's my journey here's my experience with this here's why i came to this conclusion and and it's really the origin story of your philosophy of your point of view I like to spend about half of the about page. I really like to do this on about pages, um, but I really love to put a big philosophy point of view section there because it melds your philosophy in with your experience. You know, that is your story. It's just the part of your story that directly applies to the thing that you do now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's a specific section before you start talking about, you know, introducing the program that came out of the search that you went on um, and the discovery that you made. And once you do that, then you're talking about, and this is the program I created out of it. This is Mm -hmm. the service that came from that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So let me just refresh and see if we have any other questions because I'm aware of time. Um, I'm just going to refresh and see. Um, and what I, I would love to take a minute or two to just uh, let people know about Tuesday because this yes! is exciting. So um, yeah, just say say a few words about what you're doing on Tuesday, and I'll I'll share the link while you do that. Okay, so I I love um, like the best part of launches is coming up with something completely crazy and just going for it. So the completely crazy thing that I came up with is what if I gave a sample, like a free sample that you get at Costco, if you're familiar with that, if what if I gave you a, a free sample of my True or Copy Mastermind and actually taught you one of the pages just as if you were a paying member. And granted, you know, my my one up, my first teaching call for the mastermind is an hour and a half. 
So that's a lot longer time to go through how to write an about page. We're going to get this done a bit faster on Tuesday, but I am going to teach you how to write the about page, which is the hardest page to write for yourself. It is also the second most important page on your website. It's the page people come to after you've won them over on your homepage. So if you didn't mess it up on the homepage, they'll go to your about page and they'll really decide if they want to work with you. How do we make that happen? And that's what we're going to go over on Tuesday. And I'm calling it my unwebinar because if you've been to other people's webinars, you've basically been hit with a 40 minute pitch that had about that much value. Uh, there is no pitch, it is all value. That's the deal. I love it. I love, I love that you're calling it an unwebinar. Un it's so perfect. Um, and of course, just again, to reiterate, you're, you know, you're, you're doing this, you're doing the class to raise awareness of the fact that you're enrolling for the mastermind, which is your six week program where you take people through and help them basically write the four most important pages on their website with lots of long and gold, as that would call it, and, yes. and hand holding and support and teaching. So we, we won't talk about that too much um, because the, I've, I've left the link in the comments. So, you know, go ahead. And also, I always tell people to look at this, even if you're not interested in doing the mastermind, look at the sales page because this is the best sales page I've ever read. And it's a perfect example of what can be done with the sales page for, you know, a substantial program uh, without all of the ick and the manipulation and the countdown timers and the, you know, it's just beautiful. It's such a beautiful example. Um, so yeah, I just want to let people know. And on Monday, in my newsletter, I am going to be sharing uh, some more resources um, from Lauren on how to write web copy, um, because we're all about generosity and um you know uh being of service and the the final thing to say really is that you're offering kindly offering a, a 200 dollars discount to members of my audience which is not something you'll see on the website so instead of the thousand dollars it's going to be eight hundred dollars um to get that price all you have to do is email lauren and say hey i found you through caroline and she will honor that price um yes. So, and I'll, I'll obviously be putting details of that in my newsletter on Monday. And I think, unless we've got any final bursting questions from people, um, I think that is probably a wrap, unless you have any parting words of wisdom <laughs> for us, Lauren, on, on writing copy. Oh, play with it. Mm. I mean, copy is, is something we dread doing and it's so, it's like the not fun thing. But once you give yourself permission, because you are a business owner, darn it, you own your business, you can play. You can play with people's expectations by, by delighting them where they thought they were going to get a hard sell. You can do something completely unexpected in your copy. Um, and that's what I love teaching people how to do but but more importantly giving them permission to do it yeah yeah break the rules break the rules all the rules <laughs> yeah I I agree I think it's my favorite thing about doing the work I now do which is you know conscious business doing things differently it's like I I live to break the rules and help my clients do it and it's so surprising to people and it and it's so um you know, in my experience of doing business in this way, you know, the feedback I get from people, because it's, it's just, you know, it just makes them feel so differently to the usual way they're sold to, um, that, you know, even, even when people don't buy, it creates a connection, you know, it, it, they may not sign up there and then to that, but they may do something later on, or they will, you know, rave about me to somebody. And it's just, it's just a much nicer way to be in the world. So I'm so happy you exist, Lauren, because um, yeah, I just am. And I, I think that what you do is wonderful. So thank you for taking the time to come and share your, your tips with oh, us. Thank and, you for inviting me. Yeah. This has been so fun. Uh, oh, we have, a, we have a last minute question coming in, <laughs> if you've got time, Lauren. Um, yeah. uh, Petra says, is there something you learn through getting it wrong? Quite a big question. I don't know if you if anything comes to mind. That's a really good question. I mean, yeah, yeah. On my first, <laughs> on my my so I when I switched from software as a service um, 
to working with coaches. I had to completely rebrand. I had to get a new website, come up with a new name. Um, and on that first incarnation of my website, I had just come from, you know, sort of the, the salesiest, the <laughs> leading edge of salesiness of, of software as a service, where they really teach you all the tricks of how to create this perfect, this perfect trap, really, to catch the fish that you want and make them take the bait. And you know, so I was very much still in that mindset, even though I hated it. And what I did was I went out and like I, I gave this a lot of thought. I created Pinterest boards of what does the perfect copywriter for coaches look like? And I went out and I bought a whole new wardrobe and I had a Pinterest board full of pictures where you're sitting next to your perfectly good couch. You've got bare feet and a laptop. Like that's how you work. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I went to a place that I do not actually live. And I wore things that I do not actually where and we did a beautiful photo shoot and yeah um it was not me because I was kind of afraid that that who I was wouldn't be copywriter for coaches enough it wouldn't be coachy enough because I'm you know I'm weird I'm quirky I'm eccentric I've got you know a million different interests I'm a bit the chicken, the chicken. Yeah, I've got six chickens. Uh, sometimes I go to a camel handling clinic once a year and I learn how to work with that. It, it, weird things that I didn't think anybody would be able to relate to. And I, I did not put them on my website. And that was a big mistake because as soon as I was just like, to hell with this, I'm going to be myself. That's when my business really blossomed. That's when it happened. So be yourself, even if you think you are too much or not enough or too weird or too normal, like whatever it is, be yourself, yourself. And that's, that's what people love. Yeah. I love it. I love it. What, what a nice, what a nice piece of advice to end on. Okay. Lovely. Um, thank you again. Um, and yeah, good luck with the launch. And um, hopefully some of my people will attend your unwebinar class and get great, um, great stuff. From it. I was going to sign, I was going to sign up for it. I thought I want to be there. I need to work on my about page. Um, <laughs> but it's at the same time as my CVM mastermind. So uh, oh, otherwise, yeah, that's I, <laughs> otherwise I would be there. I would be there. Um, all right, my dear, you take care. And thank you everyone that took the time to listen and come along and ask questions. It's been lovely. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.